what should you expect when it comes to winters in Salt Lake City today? That's what I'm talking about and you might be surprised. Most people I talk to always are. Hi, this is Melissa Baldwin and I'm a real estate agent here in the greater Salt Lake City area. So what that means, if you're looking at making a real estate move, I'd love to connect with you. Shoot me a text, send me an email, do what you gotta do, but get in touch with me. But first, the topic I always get asked is about winters in Salt Lake City. So most people are very surprised when I tell them a little bit about winters. Now, we have already had snow twice in the mountains and that was by be about mid-October and if you live here locally we like to call that first winter but we are now back to second fall which means today it's supposed to be um, almost 70 degrees in Salt Lake City and we've already had snow twice so it's very common for people to have a hard time adjusting to the, the different swings in the weather. After living in Denver, people always said, oh, if you don't like the weather, wait 20 minutes. Well, that is definitely how it is in Salt Lake City. We can easily, this time of year, have 30 degree fluctuations in temperatures from one day to the next. So let's talk snow. Like I said, we've had first fall, we've now had a, a touch of first winter, and we're back to second fall. Um, I can remember trick-or-treating with my son at the mall on Halloween because there was too much snow on the ground when he was little. Now, of course, that was about 15, 17 years ago. Um, and so the weather patterns have changed quite a bit from when I first moved to Utah. Um, but don't be surprised to see snow in October, at least in the mountains and possibly sticking to the benches. So this snowfall we recently had has stuck up at Suncrest in Draper, but really nothing below that. There was a dusting on the benches, but nothing that stuck around like you would expect in winter. Now in the valley with that snow, nothing stuck. Um, it was just really, it was just rain, no sleet, no, white grass, even nothing like that. And one thing that really surprises people is our temperatures and how they feel. So for instance, I've gone to New York at Christmas time and I can tell you their 30 degrees, 32 degrees is way colder feeling than I've ever experienced in Utah because of that humidity. If you're looking at the northern part of the United States, Minnesota, Michigan, you know, all up in that upper area, we do not get nearly as much snow. And again, the temperatures do not feel nearly as cold as you feel in those areas. Now, if you're looking at moving to Utah because we're known for having the greatest snow on earth with our skiing, then, you know, really around Christmas time, even January is really when the skiing is going to get to be better. And um, as my kids say, worth going up there for with powder days and things like that. So although the ski resorts will open sooner, usually around Thanksgiving, you're typically not going to have really good skiing until about Christmas time. I recently read that the average snowfall in Salt Lake City has been hovering around 40 inches annually. And honestly, I think that's even a little bit high. Um, in 2020, the winter of 2020, um, there were only two snowstorms where we had significant amounts of snowfall. Other than that, it was light dustings here and there. I hope you're enjoying my video so far today. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell. That way you're alerted each week when I drop a new video. And if you're on Facebook, jump on over to our private community page called Salt Lake Life. And there we talk about all things living in the greater Salt Lake City area, but really Utah as a whole. One thing to know about the snowfall in Salt Lake City, many people drive cars that do not have four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, um, you know, Honda Civics, things like that. And they get around pretty well in the valley with no issues other than having snow tires. Um, 
And that's one important thing to know because we really don't get in the valley a ton of snow that would prohibit you from driving. Um, I've recently had this conversation in my home and um, I would estimate that if I need my four wheel drive in my Jeep, you're talking maybe a total of one week out of a year that you really need to have um, a four wheel drive or all wheel drive system with heavy snow where, you know, it might be a little bit sketchy before the roads are plowed and things like that. Now, a couple of tips that I will give you with winter time. Um, before snowstorms, you will see the trucks out and they're spraying the roads um, and some are dropping salt on the roads. So you really need to make sure that you clean your car and get that undercarriage um, after snowstorms because that salt is gonna wreak havoc on rusting your vehicle out and things like that. So. It is not uncommon to see lots of people at the car wash after a snowstorm. When you look outside in the wintertime, it can be quite deceiving because we have beautiful blue skies a lot of the time in the wintertime, fall and spring. You could go outside thinking it's 70, 75 degrees from the way it looks, but step outside, it's breezy and it's chilly and you actually do need a little bit more to wear. So just be aware of that. Always step outside before you leave the house to make sure you're dressed the right way for winter. I hope you enjoyed my video today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm always here to help, but as always, make it a great day.